Today we're going to be benchmarking and testing out the RX 7600 8GB from AMD against the RTX 3060 RX 6700 10GB as well as the RX 6600 which around this price point is really critical where the RX 7600 is coming in from AMD at 269 They did a last minute drop from 299 down to 269 which I feel like is a good step in the right direction. The ways we're going to show you guys in these benchmarks here today at 1080p and 1440p, that RX 6700 10 gig is coming in pretty much right at this price point at this point in time, and it's making this card look a little bit inferior. And so if we go through these 1080p benchmarks here, we're going through Hogwarts, we're going through Spider-Man, The Last of Us, and also Returnal, we're seeing here that it's actually losing to the RX 6700 in all these titles. And then if we go to Call of Duty Warzone 2, it actually scores a victory here. And the same story happens at 1440p, running through all these benchmarks. You see here that the RX 7600 falls behind this card. And the sad thing is the RX 6700 also has two gigabytes more VRAM. Though another thing we'll move on to is the ray tracing. We did a quick ray tracing benchmark here. And here's where in Hogwarts at 1080p with ray tracing on, it does slightly better in its percentage difference versus the RX 6700. So they've improved the ray tracing on the 7000 series over the 6000 series, but it's still falling behind Nvidia's counterparts by quite a substantial amount. So if you're looking to play on ray tracing, then Nvidia is probably going to be the way to go there. Though, let's get in the power consumption and undervolting results where this card had some different behavior. I'm not going to say it's strange, I'm just going to say it's different behavior where the numbers being read out by the AMD software were actually really high, but then from the wall, it was coming in with a really good result. So the power consumption on this GPU is actually pretty good. However, if you decide to undervolt it, you can drop down the power consumption drastically on this card to the point where I was getting a little over 100 watts now when I did this. So a 70 watt drop in the software from the wall, it was a similar story. And this then made this card, the ASRock Phantom Gaming OC, then have really low temperatures if you decide to undervolt. And also out of the box, it's also whisper quiet too. With fan stop, that turns on after 50 degrees. And then under that, their fans will stop and even when the fans are on their 20% out of the box which is actually a great sweet spot for this card you don't need to configure the fan profiles though if you want to you can drop the temperatures down even more however let's jump into now the conclusion and recommendation with this GPU we're going to go straight into the deep end here because this is coming in at 269 USD and at this price at this point in time it's going to be hard to recommend when the 6700 10 gig exists. If you're looking for the best value card right now and you want to buy brand new, RX 6700 is going to be a pick, especially for raw rasterization performance. If you don't care about turning on any of the fancy ray tracing, any of that stuff, the RX 6700 is going to be a card around this price point. That being said though, this card I think is going to be in a few months time the most attractive option because I feel like the RX 6700 10 gig will sell out at its prices pretty soon where it came in with an MSRP of I think it was around $399 from memory and then there's the RX 6600 that came in with an MSRP of 329 that same card as well that card is also down to $210 right now and that makes that card really attractive too if you're looking to just get into PC gaming 1080p higher ultra settings as we saw here the RX 6600 still does a great job of playing games with smooth FPS though 269 this one it's okay it's I know a lot of people want more from AMD and Nvidia I know that and I get it I want more from AMD and Nvidia all the time I want max FPS lowest prices possible and so here's where if we look at the top selling GPUs right now we've got RTX 3060 out at number one this is both in America and Japan when I quickly check what's selling then we've got number two RTX 3060 Ti the RX 6600 and 6700 are on the top 10 GPUs that are selling right now they're actually some of AMD's top selling GPUs and they're good value and I do recommend people go check them out they are really good value and when that card's sold out, you're going to be left with either an RX 7600 
or the upcoming RTX uh, 4060. And so the price performance here isn't that bad. As you saw in the graphs, it's worse than last gen's price right now, but last gen's card was 399 when that was initially released. And also the RX 6600 was 329 when that was first released. In that time frame, you've also had, especially the RX 6600, since that was released, you had a massive wave of money printing and inflation come through. And so that devalues the dollar. And when that happens, everyone suffers. I suffer, you suffer, AMD and Nvidia suffer. Well, everyone suffers except the banksters. And I see people getting angry in the comments at AMD and Nvidia all the time when they should be at the banksters, the central banks who print up this money and devalue our dollar. Because the only way AMD and Intel and Nvidia are going to give you that same price point and a better product is quite simply to give you less. And that's called shrinkflation. And that's what's happening a lot in the last few years. You'll probably go to the supermarket and notice that your cereal, it was 500 grams, now all of a sudden it's 400 grams. And you're like, oh, wow, this, this thing just got a massive cut in the weight. And that's because they're keeping the price the same, but they're giving you less. And so this is what's happening with these GPUs, the 4060 Ti, same story, shrinkflation. But those companies are trying to keep that same price point and the only way they can do that is give less if they want to still make a profit and remain in business. Now, in terms of how much profit these companies are making, the RX 7600, the RTX 4060 Ti, I'm going to Computex very soon and it's one of the biggest things on my mind is to get a detailed start to finish how much is an AIB partner like ASRock or how much is a partner like, um, say for instance, Gigabyte, how much are they making on a GPU? I want to get to the bottom of that because I think for 269, this card isn't bad. It's not bad. And if you buy it, it's something you're not going to throw it in the garbage or throw it in the trash can or it's a good card. It plays games really nicely. Now, the eight gigabytes of VRAM, is that going to be enough? In today's video, we tested Epic settings across the board and it was okay. Uh, the AMD card does utilize a bit more VRAM, at least in the raw numbers, than the NVIDIA card. And also another thing I noticed was Windows 11 utilizes more VRAM. So if you want to use less VRAM in games, get on Windows 10. And also I believe it uses less uh, DRAM as well. That's your system memory. So if you want better performance, jump on Windows 10. So as it stands at this point in time, if you want the best value GPU out there, the RX 6700 10 gigabyte is the card to get. I've done a couple of videos on this recently, actually, before I even started testing the 4060 Ti and the 7600, that's the card to get. It's the best value right now. But when that's sold out, the RX 7600 eight gigabyte is not gonna be a bad choice. And that's, there it is guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. And also if you have any uh, questions or comments, then be sure to drop them down below and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. We also got a live stream very soon. We'll be talking about both this and the 4060 Ti. Uh, if you want to see that the moment it drops, stay subbed and hit that bell notification. And with that aside, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.